Tim? After the Mets retired your dad's number, how much did he talk about that? Well, I did. I mean, we've been talking about it before and after. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time coming, but uh, very quickly done by you know, Cohen's and so, uh, you know, he's a new fast friend in a, in a new direction, but uh, yeah, he, he pleased. <laughs> I guess we talked about it before and after. How did the tone of those, uh, when it would come exactly. up? Exactly. <laughs> How did the tone change before and after? Uh, quite a bit. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Alabama, his, his mic drop there. Um, it, it's full circle moments. Um, very tough to leave San Francisco to understand that as a franchise player. That didn't make sense to those guys. Like, why? What? What's happening? Um, so to have Miss Payson step in and make the promise and and secure him, that was how it was understood. You're coming home. So. Same thing with but Alabama's lifetime coming home. That was a, like you're coming home, your career, you're coming home. So a full circle moment. Thank you. 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 His health, he wasn't this, he wasn't that. Kind of take them in the last year or so. I was physically moving and feeling pretty good about himself and always always had that quick wit. So tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, we've been working. He got a new hip, so we've been working hard on physical. But, you know, he never changed in terms of how he approaches a thing and his spirit. Um, problem is, he can't do anything 50%. So when they were saying you could just come and just and be gone and it's okay, that that was the wrong thing to be saying. So he's thinking, I can't come and do it half. I, I, he's, he's 100 all the time. So that's kind of what it was, him, us trying to get to a point where he felt he could stop and talk to every kid. And he could be where he needed to be. It, as that demand, but that, you know, that's what he does. He he engages every person and lets them brings out of them what what they want to say. And it's, it's, he he never makes it about him. He always empowers the other person. So I think that's why, in the end, he found a way to get their one hundred. Tyler, Michael, there's been so many tributes to your father written and, and talked about, but what did what did he want to be most known for? What did Willie Mays want his legacy to be? You know, as I'm saying, how he, he's always been the truth. I think that's that's all he's ever been concerned about is being honest. He, in his game, in his life, you know, if you if you watched him, if you talked to him, you knew that that was the truth. And for me. You know that's my thing. You know, going around these days trying to channel my little inner Willie. It, it, that's that's what I'm feeling from the fans and all these people. I can. I watched him do this. I watched him freeze time. You know, have 20 minutes to be somewhere, stop and engage everybody for 25 minutes, but we're still on time. So. I wish it was more like that today. I wish, the guys would. Try it. And they'd understand it, it's, it, it doesn't take anything to stop and actually engage a fan. What was that like for you growing up knowing that he was so famous and everybody wanted to shoot him? Was that an imposition at all or difficult? It could have been, but my, you know, my granddad was kind of like, you know, my dad's really kind of a Tiger Woods and, and you know, trickled down to me. So my, my granddad was always very proactive in keeping me active and, and busy. Like I, I, I had my own track that, that, that he was building. So, um, and my father's always kept me close 
to the cup, you know, my job has always been, you know, keep my ears open and my mouth shut. So I, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like I did out of a purpose. And I have amazing friends and, and colleagues that have always, you know, babysit for him when, <laughs> when I couldn't. So I'm, I'm good. Bill, what are your um, personal memories of your father as a vet? I know it's just a year and a half, but uh, what do you remember most about that year and a half? That was a cool time because I was here too. You know, I was a bat boy, and so he was here. And, and in, in my own little way, I got to be on field with him and could, you know, drive in and drive home. So I remember that time, you know, as us being together, you know, and, and, and that was a Mets time, you know, like, and, and then that year, that 73 year, you know, all the way. The only thing about it was uh, that last at bat. Um, if I was Yogi, I'd have had him swing. <laughs> so, so at you, least walk out there. I mean, something. So you did Willie really Mays. So you think so you <laughs> did have a bat in his hand, you know? So you think instead of Wayne Garrett, who made that last out? Yeah, I, 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 I can't understand that part of history, but, you know. I would say stranger things have happened, but they haven't. That's the strangest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Greg, you basically grew up with Roberto Clemente Jr. And Ray Negron. That's right. <laughs> and since his father died, he has had to educate the people on who Roberto Clemente was. Now, it seems that you have that responsibility. Will you do that? You know, I think Dad pretty much handled educating everyone on planet Earth about who he was. Um, for me, the duty is to pick up the mantle and, and move it forward. You know, we want to do the work grassroots now. We want to be where the most underserved people are, where the most underserved communities are. You know, San Francisco is going to be fine. New York's going to be fine. Me, I want to be boots on the ground. We want to respond to the need instead of you know, trying to umbrella it. So that, that, that's the future, is, is the continuous work, um, one kid at a time. Tim? How old were you when you were with the Bat Boy here and your dad was here? So it must have been, I was, it was high school, so I'm, I'm, I'm a freshman in high school, so what am I, 13, 14, 13? And so how different of an experience was that compared to, I guess, growing up in San Francisco too young to remember a lot of those years? Yeah, I grew up more here. Okay. So I was a bi-coastal kid, but we lived on Dittmar, so I, I would ride my bike over here every day anyway. And and the bad boy that was here, you know, put me to work. So, you know, I, I'm from five, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, I've always been that kid in the clubhouse, you know, disrupting, so they, now you put me to work. So that was a normal run for me to, to ride my bike from down. So they just officialized it when dad came and gave me a jersey. But, been in shape. Yeah. Kind of grew up in that building. Peter? The candlestick too cold. <laughs> Hi, Michael. What do you believe your dad meant to the Mets? Everything, I mean, it's completely relevant. It's the, that 73 season, like, it, it, to come here, get off a cable car, go up to the plate, hit a home run, Joke with your old team, turn wrong to go into the clubhouse, lead a new team to a World Series. Like, it was all epic, you know, like I'm saying, except that last little moment. I mean, I think he, so that's when that whole, those Mets to me were as fun as the 69 Mets. That, 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 they, that, that team was hilarious to me. They were showmen, and, and that, that was a great year. And, you were, and, I, that, and his, his relevance in that year, a lot of people talk about, you know, the fading Willie Mays, but if you really look at it, he, he drove the team he just came to, to a World Series. So perspective on that year needs to change a little bit. I, I, a lot of people like the, the HBO movie kind of squashed that. If you talk to any players, they, they'll, they'll tell you how, how that year really went. And, and you were asked, you were asked uh, what, he, what he wanted his legacy to remember as. What do you consider his legacy? Like I just said, his, his, his legacy is to uplift the, 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 those that need it the most. You first identify him, and that, that's his special gift to 
engage every single person and understand who needs his time the most. We want to do that as an organization. We, we want to find who needs the most help and be there for him. Tyler? You mentioned that last at bat in 73, like you were, I guess, like you said, 13, 14, whatever. Um, were you watching that game in the stands? And when no, the I was in, in the back. Like I, was, I watched him grab a bat and wait. So he had a bat in his hands when he brought the bat in his hand. He had a bat in his hand. Did he? Uh, I mean, well, why, of course. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I read in the book that he said he like he wanted to be polite. He didn't want to like go up and tell Yogi like, "Hey, I should get the, get the at bat here." But uh, he wanted a bat. More strangeness. Yeah. <laughs> Willie not telling Yogi what to do. I mean, I, I don't. That was just a strange moment. I mean, we we can't really. There's no way to define that moment. It was very very bizarre. But did you ever talk about it afterwards? Oh no 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 no. no. That's a my, if you broke that up, my father would say, I don't know too much about that. That's not, that's not a real subject of, of interest to him. But, you know, the moment was the moment. Hey, uh, Michael, the uniqueness of Willie was by coastal. New York, San Francisco. Uh, tonight we're in New York celebrating Willie Mays. Because he's really New York baseball. You know, when you look back at that time, you had Mantle Mays, you had all those guys. Um, what did he think of New York baseball? And what would he say to New York fans about baseball in New York? Yeah, so Dad always says, a lot of people could play baseball, turn the lights on and see what happens. <clears throat> the lights he's talking about are the ones that shine the brightest. Here, because that's where he first was under the light. You know what I mean? And they and ironically the lights he runs were, were the brightest lights there are. So uh, you know, New York is is where he became Willie Mays. Do you know what I mean? That's that's his where the boy becomes the man in the big city. So that's a real pivotal point in his way. You know, who's been in Alabama, you know, he's got that constitution that that do right, that community thing, that, that you know, if you make $50, then you bring it home and everybody eats, and you bring that to the big bustling city, then he becomes really empowered to, to be in the mix with everybody, and he was, like the, the Red Rooster, and, and I mean, they, they were doing it. They were absolutely doing it. And I, that New York, I just love that New York, the thought of it. Yeah, I see that smile. The, the other thing, we always see stickball, and Willie, you know, he loved it. I mean, I remember touring with him, and he took us back to the old stoop he lived at, and he talked about the stickball games. Um, that wasn't made up. So how'd that start? How, how'd all that become part of it? I got an idea, but I'll let you share everybody else. I think straight up, just like we were talking about, he has this this way of stopping and talking to everyone. So and and low maintenance so i'm walking to work down the stairs the kids are there they're playing stickball yeah let me show you how to do this um you do that once and okay now they're knocking on the door and the window you know you're going to work in an hour so can you come out now and 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 sometimes on the way back too, leaving the polo grounds up the stairs and you know starting to get dark but they'd be out there and you know that would be the time to be eating ice cream or whatever and, but always engage, you know, he walked to work. Okay. What did it mean to you to see the outpouring of love and affection your dad got from the gener younger generations that never got to see him live and just got to watch him on videotape and, and, and highlights? What did that mean to you to see so many generations love and support him last week and both love and obviously? Yeah, his longevity was, was, was never going to be in question, but I, I don't think I was fully prepared for the overwhelming pride that comes with it. You know, I've always been proud of him, so. The way he left us, per se, um, was 
another. That may, may, maybe the, you know, maybe the catch isn't the greatest play after all. <laughs> I'm just proud. Mike, you you knew your dad uh, in a way that very few other people you know could know him both as a, as a person and even as a player. As I'm sure as you talk about as a young kid being all close, getting up to watch him in the aftermath of his passing. Is there a particular story or description or phrase that you were glad to see, you know, come out, you know, in light that maybe other, you know, many other people wouldn't have known otherwise or a description of him that you really enjoyed? I love them all and, and that's the, you know, that's an impossible question to answer, but if you want to know my favorite, it's where triples go to die. That's always been my one that I thought was the most clever and most descriptive of you ever teach you the basket catch? <laughs> you trying to be funny. Basket catch is not allowed. <laughs> no basket catching, no climbing. We were playing a, a, a it wasn't a, it wasn't a championship game. It was a game. It wasn't a relevant game. And the, the kid hit a little lazy one with me, and I, I had time, so I feel it between my legs and double clutched it. Threw it the first. Came off the field like, like that, right? And yeah, I got the phone call. <laughs> you ever get the phone call out? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Only Mr. Mays does that. And you know, he, he didn't do it at first. He learned it in the Army where it was okay to do it. And then, you know, tried it where it's not, you know, and so he, he, he tiptoed up to it too. <laughs> What a wonderful afternoon, we're leaving 